And we welcome you to our video sit-downs with the candidates. First up, we're going to start with Mason County District Court Judge Race. Across the table is Eric Valley. He's just one of five people running for the seat. First, Eric, tell us who you are and give us a little bit about your background and why you are seeking this position on the bench. Okay. Thank you. Um, my name is Eric Valley. I'm running for district court judge. I, I have thought this and not yet said it, but I'm about to. It's, it's almost as if it's a perfect storm. I'm the right guy in the right place at the right stage in my life at the right stage of my career. I graduated law school from Tulane University in New Orleans in 1987. I, be I became licensed in 1988. Um, so I've been practicing law licensed for, this is my 31st year. Um, in New Orleans, I, I clerk for different law firms. I'm not trying to make more out of that than it is, but I've been active in the legal profession, legal research and writing and advocacy and litigation for 34 years. Um, and I've been an advocate for all of that time. And I, I, it's, you know, we have an adversarial system, thesis, antithesis, and then the synthesis, and I would like to be the guy in the middle. Now it takes me to why am I the guy? And this gets into one of your questions, what differentiates me from the other candidates? Um, and there are an awful, awful lot of things that, that differentiate me, of course. You know, all the candidates are very different. But, so I had to pick. You know, words have power. Um, I remember hearing Judge Sawyer on the Superior Court bench one time, a, a man cussed. He said, God damn it, I'm going to lose all my stuff. And then he said, I'm sorry, Your Honor, I don't mean to be disrespectful. And, and Judge Sawyer said, and I'm not trying to invoke Judge Sawyer as anything other than this is how a, a judicial officer should treat the public. He said, no, I don't expect you to be happy. Judge Sheldon, in that same court, a man came in wearing a hat, and Judge Sheldon said, excuse me, sir, please remove your hat. We don't wear hats in the courtroom out of respect for the system. Other judicial officers are widely known literally to yell at people to remove their hats. Other people will not allow children in the courtroom. That's a wholesale violation of a fundamental constitutional right. Um, so respect for this county, respect for the people who live here, and respect for the law. Um, it's not my mission, it's not a court's mission. For a candidate to run as, as a law and order candidate, to say I'm running for a safe community or anything like that, that's a judge's job. A judge's job is to implement, to administer the law. And there's a constant and, and eternal tension there. We have three equal and independent branches of government. The legislature makes the laws, and, and the judiciary, the judges, impose the law. And it's the legislature that criminalizes conduct. And they also, to a large degree, and this gets into when we start talking about regulation, one of the main issues, and, and they're all, they all dovetail, but that independence, and I'm not taking a position on that, but it, there's an inherent tension. The legislature makes the law and tells the seemingly or, or theoretically independent judiciary what to do. But so that's fine. We have the laws, and and that's what the that's what a court does. So I respect the system. Um, and, and then what differentiates differentiates me even further. And here I, I do have the the valley memories that my aunt dictated, that my grandfather, my aunt transcribed, that my grandfather dictated. My great-grandfather was married in the Methodist Church in Shelton, Washington in 1893. There are, I, have, I have two distant cousins. I don't know if any of the other candidates, and maybe they do, know the story and the person of John Turnow. And this doesn't matter, but it's an interesting anecdote. Two of my distant cousins. John Turnow met an unfortunate end after maybe, maybe not, and, and it's an, an eternal mystery, and people can take different positions. Was he a hero? Was he not? He, he, he was alleged to have killed two nephews, and they sent out the sheriffs, and they brought him out, and apparently, according to my grandfather, telling it to my aunt, two valleys brought John Turnow's body out of the woods. And then, you know, and, and so, and that only illustrates, my family has been here, and, and I have been saying on the campaign trail, that only matters if it matters, and I will tell you why it matters. You know, so, so my, gran my, my grandfather grew up here, my father grew up here, I know this county. And it matters when people are litigating cases if the judicial officer knows the places where, the, where those cases occurred. And yes, that's a rhyme and it's a little gratuitous, but that happened by accident the first time I thought that. I, you know, and so it, it, it does matter. And again, I, it is not my goal or role to impose my will on anyone. 
a judicial officer is not political. The black letter language is a judge is a neutral third party, a magistrate or a judge is a neutral third party interposed between either two equal and independent parties or the, the power of the state and the powerlessness of the individual. So it's a neutral third party. We're not aligned, I'm not seeking the sheriffs or the prosecutors, and I don't know whether anybody else is. I think, I'll just say this, and nothing but respect for either of those offices. And I did introduce my, I didn't introduce myself. I've known Casey Salisbury since I was in eighth grade. And I took him aside, I said, Casey, he was talking to Judge Meadows, and that conversation kept going on and on. So I said, Casey, I want to tell you that I'm running so you don't hear it from somebody else and think I might be working against the sheriff's office, because I'm not. But neither am I working for the sheriff's office, because I would be a judge. So who and how can I do that? Well, I, I, I graduated from Shelton High School in 1979. I was a National Merit semifinalist. People have told me, political junkies have told me to downplay my academic record because there's resentment. And, and I, I reject that advice. I respect it. And if I had heard it from three or four people, I might do it because I have heard different things. from. And when you hear the same thing from different people, it's probably good advice. But I... I, I uh, here's the simple version. I got good grades and went to good schools. Now, people say that doesn't matter. Why it matters that I went to Dartmouth College and Tulane Law School is what it takes to get in there. There's a candidate, Ty Menser, appeared at one of the forums. He's a lawyer and Olympian. He's, I went to Harvard and I went to Berkeley Law. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares. What matters is what it takes to get into Harvard, what it takes to get into Berkeley. And so then at Tulane, I was on the law review. People say, don't put law review. Nobody knows what law review is. Well, I'll say one very simple thing. If you're on the law review, you, you don't leave it off your resume. And what the law review is, the law is the only profession where students publish the professional journals. For instance, in the medical profession, those are professional publications. So for two years as a law student, and it's more or less the top 10% of the class, we do what's called sub-insight. Professionals, judges, lawyers, present articles with footnotes talk, saying what cases say. You have to check the substance and the citation form. Now you'll have an, a 40 page article with 400 footnotes, 300 footnotes. You have to read every single, you have to read the article, read the footnotes, read the cases, determine whether they say what the author says they say. So when I'm litigating a case and I see a lawyer cite a case for a proposition, for an idea, that, for an argument, Sometimes you can read those cases and say, it does, it's just essential training that none of the other four candidates have. So I was on the law review. Big deal. Then I went off and did corporate finance in New York City for four years, corporate and maritime finance. I came back to the Northwest in 1991, and, and in 1995, I, and I spent four years independently employed in, in Seattle. Um, in 95, I went to work for the prosecutor's office under Gary Burleson. Um, and I came in, Gary hired me, and, and that resume got me the job of representing Mason County in the Growth Management Act litigation, which was at that point brand new. I, did, I, I assisted in compliance, complying with the law, which was a complicated matter. There were 13 goals that explicitly said these goals conflict and they are not ranked in order of priority. So the county did a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work. Came up with a plan, and the, growth, the Western Washington Growth Management Hearings Board hated it and they beat us about the head and shoulders. And so there was litigation at the Superior Court level. There was litigation at the Court of Appeals level. Um, Gary heaped more work on me than I had ever had before. I was doing district court, a little bit of district court criminal prosecution, truancies, dependencies. And then since 1998, I've been a small town lawyer, largely, cr I consider myself a criminal defense lawyer. Um, I do family law, I do, a friend of mine, Ron Serge, I have felony prosecutor, he said, one day in court, he said, you think we're double A AA or triple A? And I said, municipal bonds? What, what are you talking about? And he said, minor league baseball. And I told him, I said, Ron, I, 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 Ron is a wonderful human being. And I thought, and I said, on a good day, we're triple A. Because we, I have done all kinds of trials. What I haven't done, I've not done a murder. I've not done a forcible rape. And those are not pretty words to say. I have litigated everything you can litigate except and I if I left one out you know but I've done hundreds of jury trials in district court if that may be a slight exaggeration when you hear lawyers say they've done thousands of jury trials you you want to look twice and I'm not saying anybody in this campaign is saying it so if hundreds of, I've done a lot a lot of jury trials I know how to pick a jury I know the rules of evidence 
so respect and then the education and the experience and, and the desire to do and to be what's right for this county. This is a critical election. I cannot overemphasize that. And, and so what differentiates... The nice way to say this is the candidates are all very different. And I, 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 it behooves the public to learn about those differences because they are critically important. Okay. So we don't have to do the di what differentiates you. We've covered that. So let's talk about the district court. What, what is the, the top issues facing district court? Without looking at my notes, and I don't need to look at my notes, but there are three or four things, and I, I just, I, there are really two. One is demand. Okay. Demand is not going away. There will be, you know, there will be crime always. But the dovetailing other one, and I, 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 I spoke yesterday with a district court judge in an adjoining county whom I know independently. We play music together. Um, we have played in the past. So the issue comes up of, of, of regulation. Some might say over-regulation, but constantly increasing, constantly changing, putting, remember now we're back to the independence of the judiciary and the tension between that. I know on a personal level almost all of the district court workers, some of them I know well, some of them are, are they are, are very good friends of mine. I have a tendency sometimes not to finish my sentences. What I'm getting at is those are hardworking, good people. I've always marveled and, and been unreservedly impressed with the way Victoria C. Meadows, with Judge Meadows, Vicki Meadows, runs that court. Now, I intend and hope to run a very different court. The worst thing I could say about Judge Meadows' court, and I like Judge Meadows on a personal level, and, and I think she's done a great job for this county, and I didn't intend to say this, folksy. I do not want to run a folksy court. A visiting judge comes in, Judge Buzzard. He sits on that bench and commands respect. He was, and I'm not saying anybody else is not well-dressed on the bench, but I, you know, the nice white shirt with the nice tie and the robes. And, and, and I have always lived my life by this, and I, I have wondered, I think I got it from my high school swim coach, whose name is Don Martin, a lot of people know Don. But here it is. We tend to live up to the expectations of people we respect. So my campaign tag words in my candidate statement in the voter's guide are hard work and personal accountability. My daughter's 20 years old. She's, I talked to her this morning. She's in San Diego. She graduated Marine Corps boot camp June 30th last year. If Emily was over there, I would say, Emily, what's the most important thing in the world? She would say, hard work. She would say two other things. I would say, what's the most important thing in any sport? She would say, follow through. And I would say, what can you tell me about parking lots? And she'd say, they're dangerous places. Because I've been telling my daughter that since she was old enough to hear me. The most important thing in the world is hard work. And then it's read the rules and pay attention to detail. And I practice law in this county. And there are old school lawyers who do it by the field test. There are new school lawyers who do it different ways. And this is another reason why it's time for me to be judged, because I'm in the middle, and so may be some of these other candidates. But we need to read the rules and pay attention to detail. That's the key to success. I remember when I was 11, my older brother was in a Red Cross class, and, and I'm not 11 anymore, but the teacher, I felt bad for my older brother because the teacher said, these are the best essay answers I've ever seen. So this is mother's milk to me. In law school, people were throwing up before exams. I was not. I was ready. And I got straight A's my first semester in law school, and no one else at Tulane Law School had ever done that before. Another student did that that time, and you take four classes, criminal law, c constitutional law, torts, and civil procedure. Each civil procedure was a mul different. The other three are four-hour essay tests. I know the law. My detractors will tell you, he's smart. Valley is smart. You know, so I'm a lot of things, and uh, I honestly think I belong on that bench for Mason County. Eric, you're... <laughs> very engaging when you talk, let me tell you that. Um, we've gone through a lot of things without even getting to my questions. So I'm going to throw my last question at you. Please. And you, you've probably said it about 10 times in the last 5, 10 minutes. But briefly tell us why you think you should be on that bench. Briefly. Briefly, I understand. <laughs> um, if I could. Sure. Please and thank you. 
you know, I won my first case in Mason County, and that's a bit of a figure of speech. I won the inaugural and perhaps the only Law Day speech contest in May of 1976 when I was 14 years old. I've been winning cases in Mason County for 42 years. Um, this, is, this is what I wrote. My highest priority is to make, I'm not going to need to read all this, but to make and to give us all the, the best possible district court, the district court we deserve. I have the experience. Here's a critical point. I have the awareness, the, I don't know, there's a word for this, circumspect, but it's more of a, of a global or, a, or I, know, I wrote a comment when I was in, in law school about the nature of judges in Louisiana's mixed civil and common law system. The role of a judge is important. It's important for a judge to understand the function and, and to be conscious. So I have the experience, I have the awareness, I have the skills. I want, I want what's right and what's good for this county. And, and here's where we get into it. That's in all sincerity and that, that's not hubris, that's not arrogance, I, I hope and think it is. That's my belief based on the experiences that I've had here that have made me who I am. Um, so, and, and I will stop looking at that because I know what it says. My desire is to, is to give us, and, and I'm not saying anything about anybody that came before. We want, we deserve a dignified, professional, articulate, commanding court for us and to show the rest of the world a lot of things are changing. Everything's is, everything is changing and nobody can, nobody can and nobody's trying to stop it. It's time for us to step up and present that because people, we're kind of the red-headed stepchild with an identity crisis. It's time to put a stop to that. This bothers me a little bit when people say how bad this place is. Anybody who says that doesn't know this place. This is a wonderful, amazing place. The geography of this county, we are so fortunate to live here and I want to step it up in the best possible way unselfishly. I'm getting a lot of support. People share that concern. I will leave it there and thank you very much. Eric Valley, thanks for taking some time and talking to everybody. Tell everybody about who you are. Thank you very much. <laughs>